Hello homesteaders, welcome to the channel. I've got another really cool solar powered product that I think would be very helpful for many of you. And welcome hunters, campers, and those of you who like to go RVing. This will be very useful for you as well. Today I'm gonna to talk about this solar powered cooler by Anchor. We're gonna talk about the features. We're gonna talk about the test results that I did before I actually used this out on the road. And then we're gonna show you some footage of us using it out on the road. And you can see we used it a lot on a recent trip that we took. It's all scratched up and banged up already. So in the past two weeks, we took a 3,500 mile family cross country trip. And we have some very specific dietary needs. And something like this was not gonna cut it. Hauling things that need to keep cold in a cooler like this on a trip that long is just really not feasible. You know, even something better like this little igloo cooler will keep things cool a little bit longer, but it's still not very practical for a journey of that length. These little coolers can be messy, inconvenient, you have to find ice and buy it, and you can't fit a lot in here because you have to have a giant bag of ice taking up a lot of space. That's where something like this comes in really handy. Now there are little RV refrigerators out there that are 12 volt, but they are not self-powered. This cooler is. Let me bring you in and I'll talk about all the features of it. So this is a 50 liter cooler and it is a true 50 liters because obviously you don't have to put ice in it. So you can use that entire space for your food. So first on the front, you have this bottle opener if that's something that you need. It's nice that it's integrated in. On the side, you have this great handle, and this is for actually pulling the unit around. But what's nice about this handle and the way it's designed is, on the bottom, you've got a fold-out support here, and you can use this as a small tray or table. That's really nice when you're out by yourself and you're prepping food. You just lock it back up in place, the little support, fold it down and it stays in place. That way you can pick it up and put it in your vehicle. And for reference, this one weighs about 53 pounds. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, Eric, that's a little heavy, but think about this. One gallon of ice weighs eight pounds. The large bags of ice that you get from Walmart that you put in these small coolers can weigh about 20 to 22 pounds for the bag of ice by itself. And then, like I said earlier, you're taking up a ton of space that you can't use for food. Now, of course, this is very useful because it has wheels on it, so you can really pull it anywhere. But the two features that make this stand out, especially above those other 12 volt RV refrigerator solutions are this. One, take this off and you have a removable power source. You can take this wherever you need to and charge it. And that actually happened to us on the trip and I'll explain that in a few minutes. But having a removable battery or power source for this is so convenient. And that second feature is being able to charge it from solar panels. And this actually has three options and I'm gonna say three plus options for charging it. Okay, check this out. We've got multiple chargers that come in the kit. We've got this one right here, which is a 110 or 115 volt charger that plugs directly into the wall and then to the battery. Then we've got your classic 12 volt that plugs into the old school cigarette lighter in your vehicle or RV. And this one's nice. It's got an on off switch on the top of it. And then we have substantially long MC4 connected PV wire and that plugs directly into the battery. So you can set these solar panels out in the sun anywhere and you should be able to charge directly this 288 watt hour battery in about three hours or a little under three hours. One thing I think the company needs to do is actually provide some sort of carrying case for all of these. That would be a really nice added feature for something like this. So I just had to grab a gallon Ziploc bag and toss them all in there. Gets pretty beat up with all these wires kind of poking out the side. Okay, a couple other features. This cools from 68 degrees Fahrenheit down to negative four degrees Fahrenheit. So yes, you heard that right. You can use this also as a freezer not just a refrigerator. And this is actually the large version of this. They do come in 40 liter and 30 liter sizes. So your size variance is pretty significant. 
This one is 29 inches long by 17 inches wide by 19 inches high. Some other features for this are that if you leave the top open, it will start to alarm to tell you that you've left the top open, which is really nice. And there you can hear the alarm. We left it open while turned on and it's gonna tell you loudly. And this top is nice because it does lock down. There is a handle here and it's not gonna come up. And as you can see, it's got a light on it. So if you're in a dark campsite, you're gonna be able to see what you're doing inside of here. And unlike a lot of videos, you can see that we actually use this. I haven't cleaned this out yet, but I wanted to show you the drain plug. It's in a perfect position right in the bottom. If you've got some food that actually did leak and you need to get it out easily, there's the drain plug. On the battery itself, which sits behind this cover, you've also got two USB-A IQ3 connectors and one USB-C IQ3 connector. These are the latest in connectivity type for USB. You've also got the port for charging, and that includes, of course, the solar connector. Additionally, let's say you have a problem with the battery or your battery was out for maintenance, whatever. There is another charging port down here at the bottom and you can connect it from the 110 volt or the 12 volt connector directly into this port. So you just take off the battery pigtail off the end of it and plug this directly into the bottom. And in this case, if your battery's out, you are running the cooler directly off the other power source. I love options and redundant systems, and this has a lot of them. But I really wanted to test how long this battery would last without any input. Before I talk about those results, if you're interested in checking one of these out, I do have the link for it in the description below the video. And I have a $50 off coupon code if you use our link. All right, let's get to those test results and the test footage of our trip across the country. Okay, here are our results that we did for testing the battery before we left on our trip. Now these first three sections here are going to be a little bit different because I initially set the temperature at 37 degrees Fahrenheit on the cooler. We started at 930 in the morning and it initially took 25 minutes to cool from 69 to 37. And that used about 7% of the battery and we tested it inside of our house at 77 degrees ambient temperature. And when observing the usage on the app of wattage, it was about 56 watts for that initial cool down. And then it held that 37 degrees for one hour. So then I wanted to test it at a little bit lower temperature and I reset at 26 degrees Fahrenheit. It cooled from 37 degrees to 21 degrees Fahrenheit and that took 15 minutes. So I had it set at 26, but it cooled down to 21, which is interesting. And this is kind of a trend. And during that second cool down, it used about 5% of the battery and an average of about 43 watts for that process. So then it warmed up to 29 degrees Fahrenheit after about 30 minutes. And then it cooled back down to 22 in about 13 minutes, used an average of 36. So the colder you get, the fewer watts you're using. In that time, it only used 3% of the battery. So the next interesting thing that happened is the temperature continued to drop to 19 degrees Fahrenheit over the next five minutes with the compressor off. So that was super interesting and the lid remained closed for my entire experiment. Then our temperature held from between 19 to 29 for about half an hour, 28 minutes before the compressor started again. Cooled back down to 19 and used 37 watts on average for that for about 12 minutes using 3% of the battery. So after that at a 3% drain, which was what happened for the whole rest of the experiment, that battery should last you 24.75 hours at ambient temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit, which was our house. And it lasted for us 24.00 hours. Exactly. On the dot. Friends, I'm really impressed with that. That little 288 watt hour battery lasted 24 hours of cooling that cooler just by itself. And it actually still had about 2% battery charge left when I shut the whole thing down. And the next amazing thing I'm going to tell you about is the Everfrost 2, which just came out recently, has two batteries connected into it. So you are going to get 
double that. Let's look now at some real world usage of the cooler on our trip. We've got our snacks in here. We all have a very specific diet. So this is perfect for us in our family because trying to find things that we can eat is difficult. And this is perfectly cold. The temperature I set it at here, we're gonna put these on the little table we've got on the side, which is really nice. So it's almost two o'clock in the afternoon. We've had this in the vehicle, in the hot vehicle, and it is running off battery power. You can see we've still got 84% and it's sitting right where I set it at 34 degrees. Here's another great reason to have this on a road trip is we've got a lot of leftovers. Got some fried rice right here and it's much easier to take it along with you, save money, save your leftovers for your next stop instead of throwing them away or putting them in a hotel fridge and forgetting about them. Nice thing about this too is it's got the wheels on it, it's got the pull handle, and we can go a little off-road, which is exactly where this picnic area is here at Garden of the Gods. All right, friends, we are in another stop in the high desert in Utah with our anchor Everfrost. And something interesting has happened. This leg of the journey has been quite long, and I have not been able to charge the battery from our vehicle. Even though our vehicle has a 110 volt uh, outlet, it won't charge from this. So the beautiful thing about this is it has multiple ways to charge. And one of those is the solar panel kit that comes with it. And of course, when we get back home, I will go into more detail about everything. But we have one set of pretty long MC4 connecting cords here. And then this connector goes directly into the battery port and it has MC4 connectors on it. So let's get this connected and charged before we get back on the road because we've got quite a long journey. So back here, we're gonna connect each one of our cables to the MC4 connectors that are connected to the panels. And I think I've got about 10 feet here, which is great. And run them to the battery on the cooler. I'm just gonna plug it in right here and we should be charging with the panels. So that's it. It's charging pretty quick in the midday sun. It's about 11.30 and it should charge us up enough pretty quickly for us to get to our next destination. You know, every product can improve and this one is no different. And like I mentioned earlier, having a convenient bag for all the cords would be nice. But one thing I did find a challenge was the adjustment on the solar panel angle here and this system for actually adjusting it. It's got snaps on these hard plastic legs and the whole thing is really tough, but the snaps aren't tough. And this snap popped out almost right away. So there's no way for me to actually keep this from flopping over. Now it does stand up and this one is intact like that. That's just, this is how it adjusts on the solar panel. I'm gonna set it up here like this. And that's how it stays up. Now this side will stay up like that, but it kind of doesn't lock in anymore. So just a minor thing, maybe a redesign on this would be nice, but it's usable. And the performance of the panel is great. And you'll see that later in the video from our trip footage. These do have a snap here at the bottom so they don't flop around. And it's got this nice carrying handle, which makes it really convenient for carrying it around. If it didn't have these, it would be kind of awkward but it's got them. So I just realized that I didn't have the footage from South Dakota where one of the charging challenges came up. Let me explain. So we took my wife's SUV. It has a 110 volt plug in the back. However, when I plugged it into the battery and I was gonna leave it in the SUV at night and not take it into the hotel, the outlet in the back of my wife's SUV was not working. I tried to turn the vehicle on and it still wouldn't work. So. Instead of dragging this all the way up the stairs into the hotel, yes, there was no elevator, all I did was take the battery out, leave this in the vehicle, take this up to the room, charge it, and it only took maybe an hour and a half, give or take, brought it back down, plugged it in, and we were good to go. 
for the rest of the evening and throughout the travel the next day. That is the beauty and convenience of having a removable power source that you can charge in another place. And during those few hours of charging up in the hotel room and to be able to get it back down in here, the food stayed perfectly cold. This thing is really well insulated. It is solid as a rock. I don't know what type of insulation they put in here, but it is a really solid machine. So that's it friends. I hope you liked the testing and results for this Anchor Everfrost cooler. It was really a handy item to have for us on our trip. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. And do not forget to like, subscribe, and comment on the video. And if you are interested in our channel t-shirts, go check them out below as well. Now go check out this video right here, which is our installation video on the Big Battery Ethos, which is a battery system that can fit in any tight little spaces on your off-grid cabin. Have a beautiful blessed day. See you next time. Bye.